I'm going to give you my honest opinion why I think silver might hit close to $100 this year. And I was a little bit hesitant of saying this before because I think it's uh, been said too many times before. You know, it's been predicted by various people. And even back in 2010. And, you know, if everything's falling apart. Silver's going to go to $100 and from there to the moon. And But I don't think it's going to be this ir uh, uh, an irresponsible prediction to make that this year. And I'm going to give you my thoughts on this. It's actually just kind of simple, common sense things. For one, Iran steps up threats to shutter the Straits of Hormuz. Hormuz. They were, they're talking about shutting it down. I know it might be just talk. Uh, because the leadership has to say stuff in front of the people and it you know it's gonna kill them too I mean to do this but obviously what's going on behind the scenes is the policymakers in the United States want Iran to make the most first move and whatever move they make they they're gonna hit them right there so there's gonna be a war in the Middle East I don't know exactly when you know, it's it's hard to judge because every time, and this is related to silver, all this stuff relates. When you just focus in on one commodity and you're not focusing on a lot of different things, you're not getting it right with silver. And that's why I want to look at the whole package, what's going on everywhere. The um, Iran's threatening, and I'm going to get why this is oil is important too. Iran's. Um, threatening to do this. I don't think they're going to do it right away. Um, I figured before Israel was going to strike Iran if they don't get the sanctions against them. Europe, uh, European Union at one point said they're delaying for six months. And obviously, you don't need to be a brain surgeon to figure out something went on behind the scenes for them to change their mind. And you know who's got the power. So uh, I ain't even going to mention it, but you know what I mean something went on behind the scenes to change their mind. I know a lot of people aren't saying that, but that's the reality. You know, one week, the European Union's delaying sanctions for six months. Next week, oh, they're on again. Huh, you imagine some stuff was going on. Uh, just to go on with this quickly, and I'll post a link on this. I, Iran has repeatedly warned that it could choke off the Straits of Hormuz if sanctions affect its oil sales. You know it is. And I don't know if they're actually going to do this. But what's going on, reality is, and you don't need Lindsey Williams to tell you this because I knew this before Lindsey Williams, Iran is on the hit list and they're like the last one on the hit list back practically. They're looking for a fight with Iran and they want to make them make the first move even if it's not a big move, they're going to play it up and they're going to do something. I don't know what the exact timetable is, but they're going to do something. Uh, lawmaker Mohammed uh, Kalsari, deputy head chief of Iran's Influential Committee on National Security, said the strait would definitely be closed if the sale of Iranian oil is violated in any way. Personally, I think that's kind of like talk, but. I guarantee you, the policymakers and the U.S. military, I know the people are saying other things, are not afraid of Iran because this fight is being picked on. They want Iran to do something. They want them to do it. That's what I think is going on. In case of a threat, the closure of the Straits of Ramos is one of Iran's rights. Go ahead. So far, Iran has not used this privilege. For its part, the United States has enacted, but not yet put into force, sanctions targeting Iran's central bank and by extension the country's ability to pay for its oil. There is a, um, they're looking to collapse the central bank of Iran and actually they're doing a fairly decent job of it considering how far their money has devalued against the U.S. dollar in the last few years, I feel like 50%, big difference. About 80% of oil, Iran's oil revenue comes from exports and any measures of sanctions uh, taken that affect its ability to export oil could hit hard on its economy. It already has been. 
with about 4 million barrels per day. Iran is the second largest producer in OPEC. And actually what they're trying to do is they're trying to get people in Iran to actually buy the oil as an investment. I mean, they don't mention it in this article, but that's another thing they're doing. So they must be really hurting really bad. Um, I'm just stating the reality of it. I'm not making a political point one way or the other. And I'm stating the reality of this. And it pertains to silver. I do know. And almost every time oil goes in a very hard bull run, silver and gold take off like a rocket. So what do you think is going to happen this year? And add that to maybe uh, another downgrade or a downgrade by Moody's of the U.S. debt. Gold is going to take off by a rocket. And it looks like the European Union's economy, I don't know if this, I don't know. I think the oil European Union's economy and China's economy look and improve right now short term. They're going to prop everything up by printing money. There's going to be this $1 trillion QE. So what's that going to do to uh, gold and silver? It's going to bring it up a great deal. Now, this is what I was looking at. I know back in April 30th, I don't know the exact figure. I think gold was around a high of 1571 around here. The gold, silver to gold ratio was 32. Silver hit a high of around 49. I don't think it's too outlandish to say that gold is going to be 2500 this year. It already hit like I think 1921. Why? Not, why can't it hit 2500? Factor in what's going to happen in the uh, with an oil crisis. It's just history just look at what happens when oil skyrockets way up gold and silver skyrocket way up they both do they seem to all run together um they're going to print more and more money there's gonna be one trillion dollar qa there's gonna be more downgrades gold can easily go to 2500 i say the silver gold ratio is going to go past this 32 so that would well figure 32 that would put silver at 78 dollars it goes to 29 it was actually a little bit below 32, but I think uh, briefly, uh, say it goes to 29, maybe even stronger than that, $86. Gold goes to 2800 and silver to gold ratio. I would think the next time silver takes off, the ratio is going to go a little lower, so I'm saying 29. I don't know if it, that's, I don't think that's being too outlandish. It already yeah, was at 32. That would put silver at ninety-seven dollars. Perhaps, you know, maybe it'll go to twenty-six hundred dollars. And but I think this gold-silver to silver-gold ratio is going to go down about thirty, or maybe even a little bit lower than that. That's what I think is going to happen. It's it's several factors. It's because of what's going on in the Straits of Hormuz. It's what's going to happen with the oil prices. It's the QE, the trillion dollar QE that they estimate coming up. And you know they're going to do this because of election time. They don't want to do it too early because it'll lose the effect that they need for the election. That's why it wasn't happening in the last, in the third and fourth quarter of 2011. It's going to start happening here in 2012. And they want to do it soon enough that everything is looking really rosy for the election. It's not going to run out before the election, so it's going to start pretty soon. This next FOMC meeting, when it come, Bernanke comes out, he's going to say some things, and it's going to help the markets. That's what I think is going to happen. And you're probably going to have some resolve, more resolve on the euro. Now, what I think is everything's going to go up. Silver's going to go up, gold's going to go up, and there's going to be inflation. So, I mean, that's the flip side of it, but I think silver's going to outpace the inflation by quite a bit. Obviously, it must because uh, you don't want inflation going up uh, three times the price because that's really what we're talking about. I think it's you know it could very easily go close to a hundred dollars this time. It could be between you know seventy-five and a hundred, like something like in that range. That I don't think is unrealistic at all. And I've been hearing these calls of different things and Lindsey Williams saying this. I think the guy's going to be right. You know, he's probably going to be right. Just maybe it's going to be 2012. It's not going to be 2011. And that's not going to be the final climb for silver. But you know what's probably going to happen? There's going to be a pullback. 
So I think I'm going to dump a portion of it, a small portion, when I'm watching this gold-silver ratio, and that's where I'm going to dump a portion of it. I'm going to try to guess where the peak is, but I'm not going to do it, all of it. I'm going to be conservative. You know, here's silver went up to about this, you know, if you're looking back at this, uh, you know, gold-silver to silver-gold ratio here, dropped down about 32, okay? Right around this area, 30, 32, whatever the heck it is. And uh, 31, 32. So uh, at that time, and you know, I know this is a longer range chart, but I just put it in there for good reference because uh, it goes to show you how much the gold, the silver gold ratio has changed. And it has, it does make big difference as to how fast silver is going to move. Just remember that principle when oil goes in a very hard bull run, usually silver and oil have a very good correlation. And uh, I think it's a sure bet that oil is going to be in a very hard bull run due to events in Iran. So um, when this ratio, I think, may exceed, go lower than what it was before. So, you know, this is something to watch. I mean, this ratio was about 32 when this thing peaked. So if it gets around 30, maybe it'll go to 28, maybe it'll go to 27. I don't know. But you might be catching it near the peak, whatever the dollar value is at that time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell off a portion of the physical at that time. And I'm probably going to judge the spot this way too. Because maybe I won't sell it at the 60 exactly. Maybe I'll sell some at the 60. I think that's a, I think I will just to be safe on the side. You know, you take at least double money. Get, you know, secure some profits. And I'm going to play this game with the physical too. Because I think, you know, the word that people get that there's not going to be any physical coins left to buy, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. And um, as far as just getting generic rounds, you wouldn't have a problem getting that stuff. Because not everybody's in the, in the market just yet. When everybody gets in the market, and I don't think it's going to happen this year, that might come to, that might actually be true. That might actually be true. And, but when that happens, you probably should be selling. Because the majority are going to be the lemmings. When everybody's in the market, you're, that's probably where we're going to get several hundred dollars an ounce. That's when you need to be selling. Give them the physical silver. Give it to them. And hold back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold back some. But, I mean, if you're making oodles of money, you know, and if you know what to do with that, you're not going to really care about holding back some silver, you know, that you missed out on taking the cash. And you really don't know what's going to happen as far as the global situation when they reset a lot of currencies. So it's probably a good strategy to hold back some. But uh, I don't think this is unrealistic to say that silver can get very close to $100 this year. And I know that's been said quite a bit in the past about even in back in 2010. Um, you know, talking even November, December, there's some pretty wild predictions out there. And I get kind of annoyed at that, but... I think I'm being realistic here. I'm not just telling you people this because, well, I do want it to, actually, I want it to go to $1,000 an ounce in real dollars. I, that's what I want. I just know that it's not going to happen. I really do want that to happen. You know, I can pick any number I want, but I'm trying to be very realistic with this. And I, you know, since gold did go to like 1921 this year, and, you know, it had like, um, you know, and this was a peak back in April, so it pulled back, and then it went all the way up to 1921. So now it pulled back; it's like over $1,600 right now. Uh, it can easily go to 2,500, I think, this year, with all the circumstances. Trillion dollars QE. Straits of Hormuz possibly being closed, uh, briefly, even whatever it is. Um, tensions with Iran. You know that problem's not going to go away, even if. Uh, 
you know, they have a showdown war, it's going to last. It's not going to last like two weeks. It's going to last. There's going to be problems. And there's going to be damage to uh, Saudi oil fields. Price of oil is going to go up a hell of a lot. And that is related to silver and gold. I mean, it's just historically, it's just been like that. So um, uncertainty is going to bring up gold. Uncertainty. And wars require industrial metals. Things like, you know, anything that is manufactured, so many goods. I, don't, we, we, I really don't know how much the military requires of silver, but considering they require so many electronics, there's going to be more spending. There's going to be more spending. It's going to break the budget. It's going to cause a downgrade of debt. That's going to cause more people to jump into gold. Gold's going to go much higher. So I think you add up all those little different things, and especially about this gold silver rate, silver gold ratio probably going below 30 this time, and gold getting maybe even close to $3,000 an ounce. I mean, it could silver could actually go over 100, but I think it's not unrealistic to say silver can easily fall within a range between 75 and 100 this year. And um, I'm not just trying to say this because it's feel good garbage. I think that's realistic. And I'm not, you know, I like the technical charts in a lot of ways because uh, they do seem to work in a lot of ways. You know, people use these values and traders go by those things. And there's a lot of truth to it. But you got to look at the whole gamut, what's going on. And I'm not even pulling out any facts about how much silver's in the ground or not. But what's going to really drive these prices is going to be geopolitical events and what's going to happen into nations' debts and quantitative easing to keep the system going for the elections. So, I don't know what's going to happen after that. That's the one thing. I'm thinking is if it gets up to these high prices and we got these really good gains, what I think is going to happen is, you know, the silver crowd who's totally focused in only on one metal, which I think is really good metal. I'm not knocking it, but they have a very, they got tunnel vision. They're going to think it's going to go to four or five hundred dollars an ounce from here, and I, I bet you it crashes from here. I mean, what else is new, right? What else is new? I mean, even gold crashes, right? Look at uh, what happens with silver. It's going to do another nosedive like this. It's going to go from, like, I don't know, whatever it goes to. Say it goes to $85, $90 and drop all the way down to 50 or something or lower. So it's going to do the same thing. But the silver crowd is going to, a lot of them are going to be telling you it's going to go up, 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 up. And they're going to tell you it's the conspiracy knocked it down. And, you know, I don't think it's the, so much. To, I think there's some truth to that, but it's going to happen. If it goes that high, watch that ratio. If you want, I'm going to sell off a little physical. Maybe I'll buy it back if I catch it right. You know, obviously, if I knew the moves, I'd sell off all the physical and buy it back here cheap. But I'm not, obviously, I know I'm not that smart. You know, I'm not that smart. But I'm going to use some common sense with this. And uh, silver is going to get probably a lot higher than that $60 range. It's probably going to go to $75 to $100. I'm thinking like $85, $90 or something like that or maybe more. And it, there's a lot of very good reasons why. And I stated what they were. So um, if you want to play like what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and watch the silver gold ratio gold silver ratio excuse me and sell off some physical when I think it gets around 30 and 